It appears that solving Maxwell's equations in the time domain across a spatial grid is not an option for us, but we could consider solving Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain. Remember we can solve Maxwell's equations in either the time or the frequency domain. If we solve Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain, it would mean that we would have to pick a frequency at which we would want to solve Maxwell's equations. So we know what to set omega equal to here, since that's 2 pi f. In this case, when we solve Maxwell's equations, we will obtain a single solution that is valid at one frequency. Using this approach, we wouldn't be able to make a movie of how the fields propagate along in the grid in time, or see reflections as they occur in time. Instead, what we would get is only the sinusoidal steady state solution at our frequency of interest. The most popular way of solving Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain is probably using the finite element method, FEM. The finite element method was initially developed to solve equations in mechanical engineering, like stresses on a plate with a hole, as you can see here. As you can see here, FEM models can easily account for different shaped grid cells. In FEM models, they're called elements. These elements can be oriented in different directions, and as you can see on the right image in particular here, the elements can be smaller in regions where the fields change more rapidly, and coarser in regions where the fields don't change as rapidly. In electromagnetics, compared to the FDTD method, FEM is better for complex shapes, high Q systems, and this is because the ringing can be very long, can take a very long time of these systems. And also for any scenarios where we might have only be interested in maybe a single frequency or a very small number of frequencies. To introduce ourselves to FEM, let's start as we did for FDTD with a simple one-dimensional problem. Let's consider a plane wave propagating through free space and a, this plane wave is incident on a PEC, infinitely long PEC. Here are the two equations that we need to solve, Ampere's and Faraday's laws in the frequency domain. Now as for FDTD, we could go to the trouble of solving both of these equations simultaneously. However, since we're only solving for the sinusoidal steady state, it turns out that we can combine these two equations so that we only have one equation we need to solve, and this equation only has one unknown. Say, just the electric field, E, or just the magnetic field, H, in the frequency domain. So here we'd have one equation and one unknown, as opposed to here where we have two equations and we have two unknowns, E and H. For example, say I have the steady state solution for the electric field, E. Using Faraday's law, I can take the electric field solution, I can plug it in right here, I can take the curl of it, I can divide by minus J omega, and then I have the sinusoidal steady state solution for the B field. And since b is equal to mu times h, I can also divide by mu and obtain the h field component, the sinusoidal steady state solution for h. Or conversely, if I have the steady state solution for the magnetic field, say h, I can use Ampere's law, uh, plug it in right here, and I can use Ampere's law to solve for the electric field sinusoidal steady state electric field. So for this reason, when we use the finite element method, instead of simultaneously solving both Ampere's and Faraday's laws, it is more common to combine these two equations so that we only have to solve for one equation with one unknown. Let's take a closer look at this for the simple case of a z-polarized plane wave propagating in the x direction. This is the same type of wave that we considered in the very first FDTD1 module. In that module, we started with the time domain form of Maxwell's equations. 
and we simplified Ampere's and Faraday's laws to only one dimension, the x direction, for an electric field only oriented in the z direction. And we obtained the two equations that are shown here. Using the FDTD method, we solved these equations by approximating the partial derivatives using central differencing. Now, in the case of the frequency domain, finite element method, we want to combine these two equations and only solve for one component. So let's solve here. Let's choose EZ. We could choose either, and let's just choose EZ. Take a moment and see if you can combine these two equations so that you can get rid of the HY component and have just one equation that we can use to solve for EZ. After you get that equation, convert it to the frequency domain. We will then develop a finite element method model to solve that one equation in the frequency domain.